So what we are going to talk about, let's actually go through it right now. Uh, before actually doing that, let me do a quick review on what we have done last time. So looking at what we have done last time, wait. When we talked about, when we talked about uh, derived classes with a resource to see what actions needs to be need to be taken, what actions need to be taken to actually, uh, uh, what actions need to be taken to be able to um, uh, go through um, uh, allocated and deallocating memories for the derived class and the, and the base class. Uh, when we ended the session talking about something new that was templates, remember that? So, uh, but when I was started talking about templates, I went through overloading first to tell you what templates for. So let's go back to IPC 144 for a second. Um, if you recall what we created over here, this kind of, uh, uh, we created a, uh, uh, an overload for something silly. We said uh, we have a, a, a display sum function that takes two integers and adds them up into a sum, shows what the sum is, and returns it, right? And if I have something like this created, uh, if I create actually a display sum function that displays two values, if I actually come over here, <coughs> I have integers and doubles, and I have display sum passing integers to it at line 49, and display sum passing uh, doubles in line 51. And I have removed all the implementation from the display sum overloads that I have. So I have one function that accepts integer. For all I care, that could be this even. I could actually remove these three and only have the double one. I can do that. If I call this function, if I call this function, the call that is made at line 49 that is integer will still work, right? Because an integer can be passed to a double. If you recall, I said at any moment when a function call happens, this is what happens behind the scene. We said that when the function call is happening, it's going to be actually something like this. It's going to be display sum, double F set to A, and double S set to B. Now, your question should be, will this work? Can I create double variable and initialize it to an integer? The answer is yes. Why? A gets casted automatically, correct, to a double. And the same thing over here. Therefore, this function call will be a valid one. Okay? So, do we have polymorphism here? Do I have one action that works in many different ways? The answer is yes, I do. Okay? But when you put it under a microscope, looking at it with a magnifier, you see it's fake. These type of polymorphism thingy, we put it in a category that we call ad hoc. Ad hoc, essentially, in my translation, in this case, is fake polymorphism. Ad hoc polymorphism is, a po is something that when you um, put it under scrutiny, when you look at it closely, you see behind the scene there is no polymorphism. It's just faking it so we feel good, <laughs> okay? And that's coming from C. So in C language, you can write x is equal to y plus z, and no matter what type of a primitive, primitive types these things are, the plus sign works. The plus operator works. When you put two doubles, it adds them up. When you put a double and an integer, it adds it up. When you put a float and a float, it's just one plus and works for all of them. That's polymorphism, right? The answer is yes, it's polymorphism. And it falls in a category, we call it coercion 
that is an ad hoc. Uh, let me show you the Shmigli Dingi so you can see actually the, what I'm talking about here. So I'll go to. So if you see, it's right down here at the end. Okay, so if I come down over here, this is what I'm talking about. You'll see polymorphism falls in two major categories. One is ad hoc and the other one is universal. Ad hoc coercion is, the th what, I, is what I'm talking about. Um, this topic used to be at the beginning of the semester, but we moved it over here because first, I, I wish my student have implemented all different types of polymorphism, then teaching this would have been easy, which is now is. It takes like, in the other class, it took nine minutes and 51 seconds. Now let's see how long, how long it's going to take over here. So that polymorphism, the one that is happening because casting is happening behind the scene, we call that coercion, okay, which falls under ad hoc. Now, the second type of polymorphism is the one that actually has overloading. So no casting is happening over here, correct? When I, oh, and it happens in C++, we don't have this in C. So in C++, you create the same function with different uh, arguments being passed to it. And the compiler automatically picks up the proper function based on a function call. So if I have a display sum between two ints, it picks the one at line 35. If I have it with two doubles, it picks the one on 40. If I have two with containers, it picks them up at 45, yada, yada, yada. Still, if there is no match, it falls back on coercion and tries to cast. If the casting cannot happen, then you get an error, okay? That's why uh, if you have, a, for example, a cast operator for container that converts it to an integer, if you overload the cast operator, the type conversion operator for container to be able to convert it to an integer, then uh, not having this would be okay because it would have been casted to that one. Obviously, it's not a container anymore, it's an integer, but it looks like it's working, okay? Uh, that's why at many times when you do your overloading and all the good stuff that you have, sometimes you see the compiler doesn't give you an error, like you have two, I don't know, bank accounts, and you try to add them up, and you see it's actually working without you doing any type of overloading. There is no compilation error. You say, what the heck? Then you look at it again closely. You see you have type conversion operator for accounts that are doubles, which means when the plus is happening, compiler says, what the heck, two accounts? Let me see if I can convert it to something so that plus makes sense. Double, it does it, and it doesn't give you a thing. And when you run it, it's going to be something crappy that means nothing. But hey, it still compiles, right? That's one of the reasons that compiles has no meaning with respect of if your program is worth anything, right? <laughs> it has to actually work. So this type of thing is still fake, the overloading. Why? Because it looks like they all look the same. They are exactly the same names for the functions. For a person who comes from C, that's magic. Because in C language, signature of a function is its name. You cannot repeat a name in C for a function. In C++, they say, no, you can overload the function with the same name. But what the compiler does behind the scene that you are not aware of is that actually when you are naming this, the compiler in its dictionary, when it's actually organizing its functions, calls this display sum int int, and calls this one display sum double double, display sum container container, and display sum mark marks, four different functions. Therefore, there is no polymorphism. The function names are different, so it's happening behind the scene. That's, again, so the second category of ad hoc overloading is something that when you look at it, the polymorphism again falls apart when we don't have it. And it falls under the category of overloading. Actually, so overloading category is named overloading, <laughs> the one that we are using. Coercion is casting. Overloading is overloading a function. Then we go to inclusion. That's when real stuff is happening. That's when you actually
create a function and make that function a virtual function. The signature of the function in the base class is identical to the signature of the function in the derived class. Dynamic dispatch. Okay? So you're essentially saying when you are making a function call, all the functions are there with the exact same signature. But the compiler is looking to see which one is the latest version and picks that one based on the type and the reference and virtuality. Therefore, functions are the same, signatures are the same, only the right one is being picked up based on the owner. That's true polymorphism. And we call that inclusion polymorphism. Okay? We're good with that? So any type of virtuality, if it comes uh, like with interfaces that we had, pure virtual functions and, and abstract based classes, still the same. That's even more because one of them not, is not even a function. <laughs> it's an empty a function that doesn't have any, any it, it's just a signature. And the second one is actually so, so, and it works for both of them. So that's even, it's even better example. And then after that, we switch to, to templates. which essentially you don't even have a function at compile time. If you don't call it, no code will be generated for the function display sum in your executable. Your function will only exist if you use it. So what happens in here is that you actually call the display sum at line 57, compiler looks, oh, a display sum is being called. I have a template for that. This is with two integers. Okay, I'm going to create the display sum for integers. So it gets created on the fly during compile time. And that's true polymorphism too. Because you literally are telling to the compiler what the logic is, and the compiler generates the proper function for you based on your blueprint. And that is the latest version of the universal polymorphism, which we call it parametric. Coercion, casting, overloading, overloading, inclusion, virtuality, and parametric is templates. Now it's your job to go home and read the whole thing and fill in the blanks, so next time you're coming for your quiz, you can answer the questions with the good, correct buzzwords, okay? So, uh, any questions about this? I just categorized what we have learned throughout the semester. That's all. Questions? Yes. Templates. You can have many types. We're going to cover that as so as I complete it. So, so for for a template, where is the template? For a template, you can have many types. Type name one, type two, three, four, five, as many as you can have. But the more you can have, the more chances are for a match. There is one important rule in, in programming that you need to know. When you create a template or an overload, and you are calling a function, and you cannot find one, which one is the best match for it, compiler will have the same difficulty. So if I have over here a display sum that has a type 1 and a type 2, and then you have series of function calls that both have a match, then the compiler gets confused. What the heck? I, I, I. So that's why usually it's not a very good idea to have many types unless your logic really, like for this, definitely has to be one because you're adding two things up and returning the same thing out. You shouldn't have three different types over here, but you are allowed to. And more to that, this is for functions, to create functions, literally helper functions, okay? The, the template, that extra session that I, I said I'm going to have at the end of the semester to help you with your OP345 class templates, that's really something that is important, which means you can set the logic of entire object class into a template so classes will get created for you based on your need, and that's an amazing thing, okay? Any other question? 
All, yeah, yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yes. Uh, same. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you have to all see. Okay. Uh, again, if you get confused, compiler gets confused. When you, let's say you have a write function over here, and this write function is calling the other write function. Where is it? Oh, this is not the one. This was the one. You see, I'm calling, when I say, okay. When you specifically mention which one, compiler will not pick. The only time that the compiler picks that you only put the signature of the function and it becomes its decision. So in here, if I only say write, I am, call, I am writing what is called a recursive function. A recursive function works on a specific math theorem. Um, I'll sh stop the recording, then I'll explain it to you because I don't want you to go through that. Or it's not part of your thing, but it goes to recursion, which means a function calls itself. And because you didn't design it as recursive, it's going to keep calling itself until the stack for function calls are full, and then it stops. If you get a stack overflow uh, message from the compiler, and I'll tell you why it's a stack and everything, because the question came up. Um, but yeah, so when you want to reuse a base class's function that, is, that you have overwritten, in not, 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 not overload, you overwrote it. It's overwritten. So if you do that, you have to specifically mention which one it is. And you can continue that with this base. So if you have series of stuff, let's say uh, the example that we had with a, with a with an animal and a pet and a, and a bird and a body. If you want in, in body, you can specifically go back and uh, continue that thing through the path of inheritance. You can say base scope resolution. So you can say uh, animal scope resolution, uh, pet scope resolution, and you can keep going like that to actually Find the path if you have an inheritance that goes in many ways, and you can decide which one you want to call. But that's how it is. And you can use this. It, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it doesn't have to be inside. It doesn't have to be inside the method. What I mean is that if I want to, for some reason, call the base right of. Uh, of say the derived one, I can I can still do d uh, dot base right. You can do that. So d becomes the what? What where is that? I didn't write that. That that that's intelligence that lost its intelligence. Anyways, okay. So so I'm saying d's dot base right, which means I exclusively want to call the bases right. I don't want the derived. I don't want uh, virtuality to kick in. I want to manually override the latest version and call the old one. You can do that if you have access to it. There is no, nothing stopping you. OK? Are we OK? Questions? Yes, sir. Template is template. You can use it for anything you want if it makes sense. If it makes sense. Don't, don't, when you have a problem that is solved with one type of polymorphism, don't try to do it in the other one, too. It, it, again, if you are confused how this is going to get generated by the compiler, the compiler is going to get confused, too. You always remember that. But um, all these things are going to get covered in 345. When you get into 345, we're going to have it in many different ways. Any more questions? Suggestions? Objections? We're good? OK. Uh, let me pause recording.